it's a ritual that plays out four or five times a week, no matter what the weather conditions may be. She packs the clubs, heads to the range. The endless repetition required to hone one's skills and master a craft. The willingness to perform anonymous, unglamorous, lonely work demanded of any successful reinvention effort to walk that long fairway to heaven. We're here at the Golf Canada Centre in Calgary, Alberta, Lisa Longball Vluswick, first woman ever in competition to hit a golf ball three and a half NFL football fields, 350 yards, but also a great story of reinvention because this is the gal who had no prior golf experience to speak of. She was a competitive tumbler for sure and a gymnast, and but really an elementary school teacher. And in your mid twenties, Lisa, tell us the story. People would love to hear it. How you just went out one day and picked up this incredibly humbling game called golf. Uh, it, and it truly is humbling, Garrett. You know, I, my only experience, grade eight, my dad dragged me out to a junior night. I was his last hope at a golfer in the family. There were 60 boys in me. Coach told me to go hit my six iron. He ignored me for the rest of the night. So I basically quit. Maybe played a little bit with my dad one, you know, one round a year if he forced me. But it was in my 20s. My boyfriend at the time, now husband Anton, was graduating from university and he started being invited out to corporate and charity golf tournaments. Well, he was a farm kid from Alberta, so he didn't golf a lick. So he, he dragged me out to the local municipal course. Gosh, I had a Canadian tire pull cart and Mickey Mouse head covers when I first got started. And uh, I couldn't break 100 to save my life, but I loved the game and took a good rip at the ball. But you were telling me earlier that you had instantly this ability to hit the ball far, but you had no context or, or real understanding or even desire uh, to pursue this as a profession until the day the LPGA showed up in Calgary. I'd love to hear that story, and yeah. I'm sure every, because I think every story of reinvention has that day when something dramatic happened. Absolutely, no question, Gear. My day was uh, 1999, the LPGA came to Calgary, one of the majors at the time, and uh, so I volunteered being a school teacher. I had the summers off, and watching the best female golfers on the planet, I'll never forget Julie Inkster, again, one of the, the, the best mm. the LPGA will and ever have seen. She's the, gonna be the uh, Solheim Cup captain for the US team this year, and uh, I remember I helped her find her ball, and you know what, she stopped and she said, hey, thank you, and I just was like on cloud nine, or Canadian Lori Kane from PEI. She signed a hat for me and, and was so kind to me that I felt very welcomed into this community, yet I was a real newcomer. And it was that event, that that experience that made me realize, you know what? I want to compete in golf. And again, I couldn't break a hundred mm. to save my life, but I decided that day that I'm gonna give my give it a go, see if see how I could do at golf. And uh, I went into the my first competition was the Alberta mid handicap. Handicaps like 12 to 40. I came halfway through the pack but I was hitting it 80 to 100 yards past my female playing partners. And within a year, I got my handicap down to an 11, still no coaching at this time. And uh, that's, when I, that's when I knew I was long. I was 70 to 80 yards past all these top NCAA girls, and that's when I knew I was long. Now you've had a chance to experience this whole golf lifestyle from the perspective of a competitor. You've got an event coming up in uh, in June, I know, yes. in Nevada on the Golf Channel. Correct. But you, you also travel all over the world as a golf journalist and you've been to some of the greatest courses. Um, explain, if you will, why you love this game so much. Oh, this game. You know what? To say that you do for a living what you are absolutely passionate about, I can say that. Mm -hmm. You know, I was passionate about teaching because of teaching and learning, but I'm just teaching in a different way now. Right. I love this game. I love this game for women and juniors, for families, for couples. It's just, and it's a game that you can play into your 80s. So few sports you truly could play into your 80s. To be outside and feel the sun shining on your face, I'll literally just... And what it's offered me, as you said, Gare, here, I was an elementary school teacher. I started competing. I, I, there was a competition. I saw an, an advertisement for a long drive competition. Mm -hmm. I entered. I won with a 313-yard drive with a set of clubs from Costco, and that was kind of history. So now I compete all across North America. I've won seven Canadian long drive titles. I've um, uh, had a chance to all this. I, I, I became a corporate and charity golf tournament entertainer. I had a company say, hey, Lisa, come out to our corporate tournament. Come stand on a par five, hit balls for guests, raise money for charity. I started speaking at the dinners. Then I was invited to be a keynote speaker. Well, and, that, and that's a whole other story yes. of reinvention because I know you're also 
very much in demand as a professional speaker. And yeah. I love it. I, you know, I get to share my story of how I went from a 30 right. plus handicap to the seven time Canadian long drive uh, champion. The, the title of my keynote is Drive Determines Distance. I absolutely am passionate and believe that knowing what drives you and inspires you absolutely will determine how far you go, right. both personally and professionally. This yeah. is the best club in the bank. You know, people all talk about, you know, drive for show, putt for dough, but come on, when you hit that 300 plus yard drive, that feels way better than a 10 foot putt. You gotta give it a rip. Make sure a nice, nice slow takeaway. And then boom! Oh, I like that one here. I'll take that. Now the skeptic will watch this interview for it's the skeptic, those who are cynical and say, well, it's easy for her because she was born with athletic magic pixie dust that allowed her to compete as a tumbler and she just took her athleticism and moved it over to, moved it over to golf. So when people think that, even though they might not say it out loud, yes. right? Because yes. you know you don't want to offend anyone. No. But help us understand, Lisa, with, with any story of reinvention. So yes. for anyone watching this and thinking about, you know, whether I go from teaching to golf or from mm -hmm. golf to speaking or whatever the discipline mm -hmm. is, help us understand why it's much less about luck and magic pixie dust and much more about preparation oh, than just hard work. No question. Preparation and hard work. When I first started doing this scare, you know, I was competing against girls that, that truly had grown up from the junior golf realms. And I, again, I didn't pick this sport up really until my twenties. And so I, it took a tremendous amount of time and coaching and learning and understanding about the equipment mm -hmm. and practicing hours and hours at the range. I, I'm a born and raised Calgarian, you know, we only get to golf just maybe six months a year. So I, I'm under heated stalls here at the Golf Canada Center. Right. Find me, it'll be minus 10 degrees Celsius, and I'll be under the heated stalls hitting balls because that's what I have to do to be competitive on a world class level. Yes, did my gymnastics help me? No question. Balance, core strength, flexibility right. that, that, that absolutely is the foundation. But a golf swing and a gymnastic and tumbling, doing a round off back tuck are two completely different movements. But yes, I, I, I can use my some of the, the, the aspects that I, I learned and developed as a gymnast. But really, it's putting the time out on the range. It's putting the time out there and, and, and going with coaches, learning what that technique is to be to try to be the best in the world. Yeah, I know you're always out here like re routinely four or five times a week hitting balls. Uh, let's wrap this up with a little bit of a Lisa Longball soliloquy on drive determines distance. If you had one last speech to give and that person is watching right now, explain what drive determines distance means and how it's relevant to someone watching as they contemplate maybe they're at the crossroads of reinvention thinking about moving from one thing to another what would you say you know what gear i would have to tell that that person you know what you need to take what, what do you love you know i listen to people all the time complain about their job being in a job mm. that they absolutely hate yes i understand you need to put food on the table but you can put food on the table doing something that you're passionate about doing something that you love take the risk if i can tell you anything uh, you know i was in a safe job with a pension uh you know with a, in a job that i did enjoy but you know what i had this burning passion in me to be a golfer i know there's people out there that have a burning passion something that they've always wanted to do or wanted to be do it try it i cannot say enough you know what yeah you might fall flat on your face but what if you don't what if you don't get out there find out feed that passion put some time into it you don't let setbacks hold you back and surround yourself with people who support you you'll lisa, be a success lisa longball vluswick seven time canadian long drive champion and uh, here at the at the uh, canada golf center in calgary drive does determine distance and hopefully uh inspire you to recreate and reimagine the business the career the life that you deserve. Oh, there we go. That's the best of the day.